I was going to get to breathing later, but maybe just for now, if we can do a uh, a brief um, little foray into to breathing as it relates to weight training. Yeah. Is there a uh, prescriptive for how to breathe during resistance training? Here I'm thinking with weights, okay. uh, not yeah. necessarily body weight only movements, although I suppose it could be, mm-hmm. that applies 75% of the time to yep. 75% of the people. What I was taught, and I'm hoping you're going to tell me this was wrong because then there might be more benefits that awaiting me, but, um, is that I should exhale on the effort and inhale on the lesser effort portion of an exercise. Is that true? Is there a better way to breathe? There is a better way to think about it. So, Number one, if you can breathe and brace, then this conversation goes away. So if you can main, remain, uh, you can maintain intramuscular, intra-abdominal pressure while breathing, then I don't really care when you breathe. Very challenging to do at very heavy weights. If we flag this on two areas of a paradigm, paradigm one over here, you're going to do a set of 30. And you're going to do front squats where a barbell is sitting on your throat. If you don't take a breath, like, this is going to end one way and one way only, you passing out. Clearly has to be some breathing strategy. The other end of the spectrum is, let's say you're going to do a vertical jump. You don't need any amount of breath there. It's never going to happen, right? The question is, what about in the middle? right? So I'm doing some sort of strength training there. Well, number one, make sure you're braced, and then you can get away with less need to worry about it. Um, in general, a, a decent strategy is to maintain a breath hold during the lowering or eccentric or most dangerous part of the movement, and then you can exhale on the concentric portion. So if the bench press is our example, if you held in, braced, lowered it under control, and now started the concentric pushing away for it, and then you wanted to take an expiration whew, during the last half of the concentric portion, that's, that's an okay strategy. If you're going to do a single rep, you don't need to worry about it. You, you can just avoid or omit breathing entirely. You're going to be just fine. If you're doing more than that, especially three to four to five to seven, eight, you're going to have to have some breathing strategy. A very common one is um, probably every third breath. I'm going to do like, <gasps> exhale on the third, reset, rebreathe, something like that. If you feel like you need to breathe after every one, that's okay, but it's going to get wasteful because you have to take time in between reps of sitting there. If it's a squat, that's different um, versus a deadlift if you're resting at the bottom. So there, there is a little bit of game here. So in general, though, is, is that 75 75 kind of really thrown out, you threw out. Breathe in, do the lowering, and exhale on the out. If you have to, less reps, don't worry about it. More reps, then you need to come up with some sort of breathing strategy. How about breathing in between sets um, and maybe even after the workout? Yeah. This is something I think a lot of people overlook. Like, And because the it is the case that recovery has to do both with the specific activation and um, to muscles and the nervous system, but also the attacks on the nervous system can also take place between sets. I mean, if you're no, no. really geared up between sets and you got adrenaline, you know, as high in between sets or close to it as you are dur- during your sets, you can imagine that the recovery would take longer, or at least that you're not spending adrenaline in the most efficient way if there is such a thing. Yeah, fair. You're not going to see any athlete that I work with just breathe in between. Whether it's in between innings or in between rounds, every single one of them is going to go back, sit in the stool, and they're going to immediately be into a breathing routine. A very intentional one. They're a little bit different for every athlete, depending on the sport. Even um, PGA golfer, there's going to be a, we just hit our ball, we're moving to the next one, we're going to go into a breathing strategy. Every one of them. It's, It's a huge area of potential benefit and consequence if you're just ignoring it. Um, in general, we want to do any sort of calming breath. We want to restore. It depends on if the well, it depends on what we're combating. Are we combating low oxygen or high CO two? So that strategy is going to be a little bit different. But in general, that is a huge time opportunity to get better. In fact, um, people can go back and listen to some of your earlier episodes where you talked about, or you have spoken about, I think, on this show when uh, neuroplasticity works. And if you're losing that opportunity post-exercise, you're leaving gains on the table, if you will. So not only are you going to see every of the athletes that I work with mostly have a breathing strategy in competition, we're not going to just finish a workout, high five, drink water, and walk out of the gym. There will be a down-regulation strategy that is heavily involved with some sort of light control 
as well as breath control. Um, the individual prescription on that, there's a ton of variation with what you can do. The easiest thing is do something that calms you down. Most likely that's going to be move towards as much nasal breathing as you can possibly do. And a, a really easy rule of thumb is a double exhale length relative to inhale. So if you need to take a like four second inhale, double that time and breathe out for eight seconds. Uh, box breathing is fine. So equal inhale, equal hold, equal exhale, equal hold. So four second inhale, four second X hold, et cetera, et cetera. A triangle is fine too. There's a lot of ways you can get really complicated, like what Brian McKenzie will do and Rob and those guys have, you can get all kinds of systems for inhale, exhale control and it can be optimized, but some strategy of calm. Um, we're going to almost always put you on your back or close, and then we're going to cover light. Um, we can do some, like we've done actually a number of uh, musical interventions as well, but you can as just as simple as sit down in the locker room if you have to and just breathe for five minutes. That alone is going to be productive. That's great. If you're breathing in the locker room for five minutes, I suggest closing your eyes or you get some funny looks. And if uh, you'll still get funny looks, but you won't see people looking at yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Uh